Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, time for another Metal Earth build, another one from the Halo series. I'm probably going to embarrass myself because I'm not familiar with this one, but the Forerunner Phaeton. Phaeton? Phaeton? Yes, I have this interesting looking craft with the big round parts on the side. And <laughs> I'm going to try and put this together. If you can't already tell, I know nothing about it. But I'm still up for the challenge, so let's open this up, see what's inside. I may go research some pictures and put it together. Forerunner Phaeton? I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to say that. Let's open this up. I keep wanting to say Photon. Fire Photon Torpedoes. Inside we have, looks like two metal sheets. Yep, yep. Set this to the sign. Open up the directions. Oh, there's two. Didn't notice that at first. Let's open up the first one. And of course, start with page one. The usual Metal Earth, the 360 view, the web address, the QR code, so you can go see it online. We have the line drawing of the sheet. Going down here, it talks about insertion tabs, insertion hole, and fault lines. So you know what those are. We have needle nose pliers are helpful for assembly. We have the older part of the legend, at least that's what I call it. When you're putting it together in the instructions, you will see a blue circle at connection points is telling you to bend tabs over 90 degrees. If you see a green triangle, it's telling you to twist it 90 degrees. And in the rare instance you see nothing, well, use your best judgment. And down here, pull and screw metal tabs 90 degrees to tighten. In the newer part of the legend, when you see an E pointing at the side of a part, it's telling you that's the engraved side. When you see any e pointing at the side, that's telling you that's the non-engraved side. This is not always as helpful as it seems. They're not always clear what's engraved and what's not considered engraved. And then we have an attention point, a little finger pointing at something. It's like, pay attention to that thing there. Sometimes it's fairly obvious, sometimes it takes a while to figure out what they want you to pay attention to. But it's usually trying to tell you to line up a part a certain way, put a tab in a certain hole. Occasionally there'll be some description as to what you're supposed to pay attention to. And down at the bottom, the layout of the two metal sheets. Give me just a minute to figure out which way they go. I believe that's it. All the part numbers pointing at all the parts so you can find them on the sheet. We have some parts that are the same color. They're colored in, shaded in. When you see things that are the same color, they're the same part. For instance, 29 here, this blue one. It's also over here, so it's used in two different places. It does not have a number because it's numbered over here. That kind of saves on the crowded numbers along the side. It makes it easier to find the duplicate part you're not looking for another 62 you go oh blue where's blue there it is i like that they do that now it's less confusing and makes it quicker we're going to find if we slide over to page two to the start of the assembly flow chart starting with two and one and these come together and then three adds on and four and you just follow the arrows and fold and build and add parts as it says to do we get down to the bottom, we flip over to the back page, continue doing the same, following directions, following the arrows, and add parts as it tells you to. Page four, continue the same, follow the arrows, adding the parts. Once we get to the bottom of page four, we open up the next piece. I six. Okay. On the inside of the next sheet. We go to page five, continue following the arrows, adding the part, putting it together, then on to page six, much of the same. Flip over to the back for page seven, we're getting pretty close. Page eight, big parts are coming together, and at the bottom, we are finished. Let's talk tools. I have a pretty standard set of tools that I use in most every build. I have needle nose pliers, I have flat nose pliers, I have flush clippers. These are a must for me. They clip parts off the sheets quickly and cleanly. I have a set of precision tweezers, one with a very pointed end, one with the pointed end ground down slightly, 
a flat set with a sort of curved tip, useful for twisting tabs in slightly curved areas. Also have a pretty standard set of tweezers with a flat angled end. These come in one of the Iconics kits and I use them a lot. When it comes to shaping rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. I've recently started using a sculpting set. I got this pretty cheap on Amazon. It's a whole set, just a lot of different shapes and sizes, some with angles, some with points, some with flat sides. It's good for pushing over tabs, reaching inside and pushing on the inside, helping to shape small areas you're just too tight to get into. And we have a couple of hook shapes down here to replace the hook tools that I used to use. We've looked over the instructions, We've got our metal sheets, Got some tools gathered to get started. Let's put this together. I had a band-aid on because I had injured the tip of my thumb, but the band-aid was getting in the way, so I put on a glove. There are a lot of angle tabs in this build. It helps to bend tabs so that they are all pointing towards the next part, such as in part 4, where the tabs are pointing outwards when the sides are bent down. Bend the tabs straight down and they will line up better with their slots. With part 8, I bent in the middle and then bent the flaps over to get an idea of how far to bend all of them. That way I could bend the flaps over before rolling it up.
There is a lot of this sort of thing in this bill. You'll want to hold the inside of the ring still with something here while you bend the outer parts over. The metal is real thin and will want to bend improperly. The tab on the thinner part of part 14 did not fold over but more curved. Tabs like this that do not really have creases are harder to bend correctly so they line up with their slots. It took quite a few attempts to get the circular part into place. I used a magnet to hold this tiny part so I could grab it the right way with the pointed tweezers.
with two pieces, such as 22 that bend in half and the two connecting tabs are very close together yet not quite meeting. What works best for me is using my precision tweezers to keep them slightly open and bending the tabs or at least one of them inward just a bit to match the distance between the slots.
These tabs are tough to line up. With them sort of being inside a little and not along the edge, it's hard to see what you're doing and tough to reach in and adjust things. I had to pinch these tabs inward so the assembly would fit properly. I had something new happen in this build. One of the slots was not big enough for the tab. I turned the part a little bit and tried it at a different angle. I finally tried tabs of a spare part and nothing would get in. I had to wedge the slot open with another tool. I spent a good 15 minutes working out this problem.
I had a time trying to get the back part on. At first, I thought it went around the top part here, but eventually I figured out it goes underneath and around the rear part. This is a tough one to get into place, and once you finally get the two forward tabs in place, getting it to line up with the ring is another challenge. It didn't look like it wanted to bend the way that it did, but once I bent things down enough to get the tabs in, it looked okay. The first two tabs were not so bad. Unfortunately, I paused the camera to look online and did not immediately unpause, so I missed the first two. But the second two tabs, the other two, were much, much more resistant to going in.
There is a tip saying to connect the two middle tabs last. I cannot argue with that logic. Actually, the middle tabs just kind of fell into place. The Forerunner Phaeton. This was kind of a fun build. I enjoyed all the circular areas and putting those together. It wasn't very challenging. It was a little challenging, but it wasn't a lot of ridiculous how in the world I'm going to do this. There was the one small problem with the tab, which I mentioned in the video. That's never happened before, and that took some time to work out. But beyond that, it wasn't that hard of a build, and I did enjoy putting this together, and I think it looks really cool in the end. This build took about three and a half hours, and again, it probably wouldn't take him quite that long if not for the problems with the tab. There's a lot of time spent bending over the flaps and all those circular areas, and that, you know, takes time and patience just like anything else, like any of these kits, really. And I, for whatever reason, didn't mind doing that. I didn't mind folding all those tabs down and putting it together, it just, something about the shape of this really worked for me. There's not a lot more to remark about. It came together fairly well. I enjoyed the build. There's no big problems to talk about, so I'm gonna leave it at that. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.